Simon Clark, who is a cellular microbiologist with the University of Reading, and he joins me now from uh, the UK. Simon, uh, it's a pleasure to have you on the news hour because you're going to be the person who pulls everything together. The message from the officials at the World Health Organization, the WHO, is that containment is still possible and that a global pandemic is not inevitable. Do you buy that? Um, <laughs> I think it is unlikely, to be honest. It is not beyond the realms of possibility. Uh, I commend them for their optimism, but I think at this stage it is unlikely. We're not guaranteed yet to have a pandemic, but it could well end up as one. Okay. Um, I was reading, when I was doing a bit of research into this story today, um, one interesting story that I came across was there was a woman in Japan, I think specifically from Osaka, that tested positive for a second time on Wednesday um, after she developed a sore throat and chest pains. The country's health ministry has confirmed that this is the first case in the country where a patient tested positive for the virus a second time. Um, I know that we don't know much about COVID-19, but could this virus be um, biphasic? I mean, before it going away, it shows up its head again. Um, I think that is unlikely. I think a much more likely explanation here is that the, uh, the, the, the lady got the infection the first time around. Her immune system cleared it. Now, it either cleared it completely or not quite entirely and left a little bit of virus behind. Either way, it doesn't really matter. What it, what it means is that she became infected again or the infection re-established in her and her immune system was unable to suppress or clear that infection, that second infection. So her immunity that she got first time round wasn't protective. And that's important because there are four other endemic coronaviruses in the human population that cause the common cold. You, or I, you and I have probably had some or all of them. And you can get those every year, again and again and again. There's no immunity to them. We are, our, our body doesn't uh, prevent reinfection. So that might well be happening with this again. And that has implications for vaccine development, quite serious implications. Okay, so this is a virus, as is the flu. Now, the flu season generally subsides with the uh, warmer weather conditions coming, like in April and in May. Um, do you think the coronavirus will go for it? It's entirely possible, but as somebody reminded me the other day, the country with the fourth uh, highest number of infections is, I still, I think it's still uh, Singapore with its tiny population. And it's never cold there. It's always warm. So if it hasn't stopped the infect, if the warm weather hasn't stopped the infection gaining a hold in Singapore, it seems unlikely that it'll do it elsewhere. Okay. Um, since a specific treatment for this COVID-19 isn't yet available, what's the approach used by medical professionals to treat patients who are suffering from the symptoms? Well, it's to treat the symptoms. If they're having, um, for example, respiratory distress, treat that. In extremis, in extreme examples, they may need ventilating or something like that. Um, so the medics really can only treat the, the symptoms. And that could just be taking paracetamol if you're feeling a bit under the weather, or it could involve much more serious intensive care uh, in a hospital. All right, Simon Clark from the University of Reading, thank you for joining us here on the News Hour. I do appreciate it.